Hello everyone. So today I have the promised mini album that I'm going to share using the card kit of the month from Spellbinders for August 2022 uh, Butterfly Sparkle. I'm just going to set that aside. First I'll share a quick flip through of this example mini album. Let me see if I can... Oops. And then we will get into the tutorial and then I have a few more examples from other kits that I've made. So this is just a little mini album with cardstock here and then the die cuts. These are all, and this paper is all from the current kit. And I have a little pocket here, tuck, that I've tucked this, uh, oops, banner flip into. This is just kind of a spot for a photo and so, or whatever you would want to put in there. So I've left the butterfly wing open here slightly so that you can slip in something if you want. And then this is a side pocket so there's a little thumb notch and then I've stuck this and tag in there. Here I have made a little envelope, but I've only glued it on by the bottom and the sides so that I can stick some more ephemera in. These are parts of the die cuts. Well, this is part of one of the die cuts I used in one of my cards, and then this is a die cut from the die cut pack, and then I used the star die cut to have just glued it on the bottom to hold the envelope flap down. And this cute little piece of die cut ephemera from the pack fits perfectly in there. I had to I don't have like, I didn't have the perfect measurements, so I had to kind of make it fit and work around it with my little envelope here. Then I've used this die cut here from the pack as a tuck spot, and I've just glued it kind of partially on the sides. And then I stuck these little tickets in there, and there's the back. So cute little album, really quick and easy. Let's make it right now. Okay. So, first we're going to take, you need some cardstock. Uh-oh, I got some ink on there already. This is, you need two pieces, I just cut it in half, of 3.25 or 3 and a quarter by 6 and a half inches. So these are 6 and a half long, 3 and a quarter high. And the first thing we're going to do, if you have a scoring board, this will help, but is we're going to score at 3.25. Two five, three and a quarter, right down in the middle, basically. And you want to fold. And I'm, I left my measurements on there to help you see it. I mean, but uh, you know, obviously you wouldn't need that. But we're going to cover it up in the end. I might actually erase that because I do want to keep the pink edges. So remember that six and a six and a half by three point two five. I'm going to move my scoreboard over and just erase that. Okay, so now we have two pieces that are pretty much identical. Okay, so this step right now is optional. Remember the rounded corners? I'm just going to go ahead and do that now with a quarter inch. And... I'm just going to do, oh, whoops, I'm not going to do the folded corner of the side. That's going to be just the ends, if that makes sense. And then we can go ahead and put our little album together. It's very simple. Now, the decision you want to make here is where you want your pocket to lie. In my example that I've already shown, the pocket's on the side. So I guess I should just go ahead and show a top pocket. What do you think? And I have some tacky glue. You can use whatever glue you like to use. I'm just gonna do kind of, I'm trying to get a thin line here because ta the tacky glue is pretty thick and uh, you don't actually need that much. I guess I could have glued uh, this first. I got way too much there. Um, and then rounded the corners. Might actually be a bit easier, but sometimes 
my corner chomper needs to be cleaned. It's got a lot of like adhesive gunk in it, so I just did it this way. But again, you know, there's multiple ways. Okay, so I've glued two sides and the bottom. And maybe I should bring it a little closer here. And then I'm gonna open it up and match up the folded side here. Thankfully, it's wet glue because obviously I didn't get that <laughs> uh, lined up perfectly. But once you're happy with the placement, another thing to have handy, which is useful, if you're messy like me, is some paper toweling. And then we're going to use a bone folder or some hard edge and push outward so that your glue isn't souping in to your pocket space. And I'm gonna fold this over and fold this over because this is going to be, basically this is going to be the spine of our little mini album. So I want these to match up the best. And thankfully, again, wet glue, I had some time because it wasn't quite it's not quite laying perfectly there. And, you know, again, this is a handmade item. It really doesn't need to be perfect. But I like to get it as close to uh, laying evenly as possible. So there we have it. Let's see if the camera will focus. There we go, focused. And you can kind of see that edge there. Now, before we get too far in, we probably want to remind ourselves of where the opening is by making a thumb notch. And the way I'm going to do that, I mean, you could, if you just wanted the notch only on one side, did I do it on one side here? Oh, I did only do it on one side here. It's definitely easier to do it before you glue your papers on. Um, but, you know, you can always wedge it in there. I'm just going to do it on both sides. And this is my lovely centering ruler, my little friend here. Yeah, this is, I think this is about centered. I mean, and you can also eyeball it. I'm looking for a pencil here. I'm just going to make one little mark there. And then I'm going to take my punch and try to, this one I'm just going to eyeball centering there. And make a mess. All right. I've got some, uh... I've already made a mess. I'm going to get some of this adhesive off with this lovely rubber eraser. You know, you can find these at the Dollar Tree if you have a Dollar Tree, which is, I think, a lot less expensive than some other places. I think my desk is messy, too, so maybe that's part of the problem. Is it's like picking up stuff from my desk, but ugh, you know what? Yeah, you can probably see that. <laughs> it's dirty. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and I've already cut down pieces, oops, from the paper pad, but you need two pieces for your cover of patterned paper and for the back. And what size is this? This is three by three and lovely three by three square. So it's just a little shorter. And because I rounded the corners, I think it'll look good to round the corners here as well. And there's some, yeah, get that off there. And then I'm just going to put it on. I'm going to use wet glue again, but I'm going to use this one because then it'll come out easier. You can easily use the double stick tape from the kit for this step or a favorite tape runner. I just really have a hard time getting things straight and uh, it can be hard to, you know, change it once you've put it down with the especially the double stick tape that comes in the kit. It's down once it's down. Um, and I'm just spreading because the other, the downside of the liquid glue is, you know, it's not fully even coverage, but yeah, that's, I am not trying to get it too straight today. So that is why I am choosing the liquid glue. So I can move it around. You see that? It's totally crooked. You have a little bit of time. All right, now we have some pattern paper on the front and back. So we can decorate the front right now, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and 
just do some paper on the inside pages. So again, three but is this still a three by three square? I think it is. Yes, three by three square. I've got this lovely uh, butterfly pattern paper. These all these pieces are from the paper pad. So that came in the kit. I'm gonna round the corners again. I really like, oops, whoa, what are you thinking, girl? That's me trying to put things on upside down. I tell ya, every time. Um, what I was going to say while I was trying to put this on upside down was that I really like this subtle tone on tone butterfly pattern paper. And I think it looks pretty nice with this light pink cardstock that came in the kit also. Now, I have a little bit of a problem here with my thumb notch. So, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and round the corners first. I guess it's not really a problem. It's more of a challenge. Because I don't, you know, want it to be covering my thumb notch. So, what I'm going to do here this time... I seem like I pick different ways to deal with it every time, but this time what I'm going to do is try to figure out kind of where I want it, and I'm just going to go in here and sort of pencil the line, and then I'm going to very lightly pencil what is approximately the distance. It's about a quarter inch, and I don't even know if you can see that. Oh, camera. Come on. There we go. Can you see the second line? I'm not even sure because it's so light, but I can, which is important. I just didn't want to have to try to erase if I don't get it perfectly. And then I'm going to take my thumb, my circle punch here and go just right there. So let's see how I did. Yeah, that's pretty good enough. I mean, it's not perfect, but hey. Okay. That's nice and adhered. So we have the two pages already, and then we have these two. And I am choosing different pattern papers for each um, page, which that's entirely up to you. You could do similar ones, you could do, you know, these are the scraps I had that were left over still from the kit. I like the patterns that are kind of all over because then you don't have to think about Oh no, am I putting this on upside down or not? A little bit of extra glue there. Again. Uh-oh. Well, I didn't do as well lining up my thumb notch that time, but that's that. Okay, hopefully that's okay. I have my son and his friends over, so you may have heard some noises. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, we're going to decorate the cover now. We have all the pages covered. And then we have a pocket here. And then we'll go ahead and look through scraps and see what we like. I already pulled some things aside here. I think I was going to put this kind of... Whoops, why did I put that away? I think I'm going to put this little scrap of black and white polka dot centered. Relatively speaking. So... And make sure, okay, so you know how I have that habit of putting things upside down. I wanted to make sure before it was too late that this was the, whoops, I'm out of frame, top, um, not that it 
would matter too much for there. Now I have this doily die cut and actually was I going to do it like this? And then I have a chipboard sticker. So I didn't pop out all of the um, pieces. They didn't like, they didn't come out very easily. So I'm going to cover up some of it. So I, that's why some of them aren't popped out because I don't need it. Maybe I could have used, I have like this brush thing, but anyway, I just didn't do it all. So let's see if this works. Oops, <laughs> throwing things around. Before I press that down, I want to see. I think that's good. And there's a lot of glue in there, so I'm just going to initially press it down with my toweling so that I don't make a big gloopy mess. Now I've got this chipboard sticker and it's thicker. I wouldn't necessarily put the chipboard on the inside, so but I think I can get away with it here on the outside. And what was I gonna do with these? I got a couple scraps here. I was thinking of tucking them under, but I don't know if I left myself enough room for that. Oh, maybe I could do it the other way. Yeah, that's not too bad, right? What do you think? Okay, so they need to go down before the chipboard sticker, so I'm gonna just, lest I change anything, I'm gonna just add a little drop of, is my head getting in the way? Hopefully not. Whoops. <laughs> drop of glue there. They're exactly how I want them, and now <laughs> hopefully they'll stay. I don't know if I'm the only person who has that problem, but like, I get it just how I want it, and then I take it off and glue it, and I put it down in a different place. Like, why? But, yeah. So that's why sometimes you see me making things stay together before I permanently glue them down. Uh-oh! Now that's not good. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to add first some glue here, and then some glue to the back. They really didn't want to leave the acetate backer. This thing was committed to staying. Do I have anything else? Yeah, there's a little bit there. Let's just use a lot of glue with this piece and hope it'll maybe not on the front side. There. Push it down. That doesn't look too bad. All right, what do you think of that? Cute. So now we can go on inside and we can bring, maybe I'll scoot out just a little, make some room because I have a tray of die cut pieces here. And then I don't think I'm going to use the chipboard. This is all of, oh, right. No. There's actually another tray here with lots of things for me to choose from. I think for this first pick, no, maybe for this one. Yeah, I like that. So I am going to use this watering can as a tuck spot. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue along the side here. And yeah, I think I'll leave just a little right there, but I'm going to leave most of that open. Because you never know what size of thing, ephemera, that you want to glue or add to your journal. And you don't want your oops, tuck spot too glued down to where you can't fit something. And believe me, I have done that. So. Now we have a little tuck spot. We should give it a moment to, to dry. We do need to find something to stick in this pocket. So let's see. We still have this tag. Oh, there's another tag here. Don't let anyone dull your sparkle. We could go ahead and put that one in there. I think that's a nice one. I'm just gonna stick it in there. Little spot. And then we have two more pages that we can 
do things on and then this page as well since we kind of have two tuck things here I'm not I can't decide what I want to do with this hmm, okay Ooh, you know maybe I will do another little tuck spot I just but I want where's my other postage stamp Ooh, that's pretty I don't like covering that up Okay, I'll do that. I don't. I hate covering up a little bit of this, um, of this one. I love that little edge there, but I have to cover up one of them. And I also love, love, love this rose one. Maybe like that. So I've just attached the two postage stamp die cut pieces together, and then this full thing. Thing. This full, um, I can't think of any words. Okay, well, this whole thing is going to be, I hate that word thing, but I'm going to use it anyway, uh, the tuck spot. And again, I want to leave room, so I'm going to just glue right along this side here and the bottom. Gives me the most room for tucking things in. And... Remember, since we don't want to glue too much, we're going to pull away from the pocket or the tuck. So towards the sides that we glued. Okay, so you think this one's dry enough to stick stuff in there? Maybe. You can stick anything you want in there, really. What do we have? What would go with a watering can? Um, and any of these larger ones can also be written on the back, you know? You use it as a tag. I don't want to do that one. This one's a bit too large. I think in one of them I folded. Ooh, sorry, I just got a little distracted by the negative space. It's a bit too long for that, but um, one. I loved this piece. It's so pretty. So I don't like how it goes there, though. Wish for it, hope for it, dream for it, dream of it. This is a nice size. I'm going to tuck this behind. And then, you know, you can either stick a picture on the back or journal on the back. But I'm going to stick that there. And I still have lots of pieces here. I kind of like this lady here. Again, you can stick a photo in there, but yep. I think that's going to have to do it for that page. Then I have two more pages to work with here. I pulled this aside. Hmm. I don't really think it's going to work there, though. This, I was thinking you could glue just the top and have tuck things under, but I don't like... I don't love how it goes with those two, so I'm not going to do that. Oh, that's cute. I like that with the black and white. But I wonder if it's taking up too much space. Well, this could just be a really full of tucks journal. It's going to get very thick, so I'm going to go ahead and put the bicycle down. Now, let me see. We also have some scrap papers. I'm just going to grab a little cutter here. And my precision marking instrument. Oh, it's just my little bone folder, but that way I don't make it too big. Okay, open that. Where's my paper? Here is, still have lots of lovely papers from this kit. So I'm going to pull out some of the scraps. Ooh, yes, actually. Ooh. It's a little bit small, but I love this one. So I'm going to use it. First, I have to figure out I need a ruler. I think that's, yeah, it's about a quarter inch. So if I want this have a quarter inch border all around and it's 
two and three quarters long. I'm going to take off so two and a quarter by one and three quarters. Wait, it already is the right height, so two and a quarter. I just need, and this guy doesn't have great measurements on it, so I'm just going to make a little pencil mark where that needs to be. Make sure I'm still in frame here. Getting a little distracted. Um, that was not quite right. Okay, hopefully that's close enough. Let's see how we did. Yay, I think that's going to work. Now, I think, I think I can get this one straight. Let's see. Because I do use the tape runner a lot for making cards and things. Look at that. How cute is that little thing? And, oops. And fit it right behind our bicycle have a little photo mat there and or journal on the back so lastly what should we do with this side I'm thinking something in the corner is it hard to decide yes There's a lot of gold going on over there. Maybe I can do this. Huh? So if I just need this a little bit smaller. Yay! I got something such right, I think. I don't want too much shine going on in the background. But I like a little shimmer. Okay, where's my trusty towel? And you're getting a little bit wild up there in the corner. Okay, how's that? Pretty good. Wow, super shiny. But, butterfly, butterfly, I think it goes. This one, I'm just going to put glue on the top. And I'm going to drop it. Uh huh. Oh dear. Moved that around quite a bit. Got to buff that glue off of there. Okay. Now. Did I put this anywhere? No, I didn't. Hmm. Oh, the blue might be nice. Let me see here. Okay, I have about two and a half inches to work with by, let's say, wait, how wide is this? I could try two and a half by two and a half. Now, does that look silly with this because it's too small? Kind of. Huh. Ooh. But. I don't like that either. Hmm. Okay, I'm going wild here with scraps. I think, though, I think I've landed on something I can live with. So, I kind of put that on crooked. Oh well. I do love this die cut piece. Now I won't be able to write on the back of it, but that's okay. I'm not going to use that. What? Too small. And actually, now that I think about it, wouldn't this be a perfect place for a little uh, sentiment? Ooh, we have dream. 
that kind of looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. Do I need anything else with it? I'm just going to put this down. Alright, that is going to be my little card, journal card. I can write on the back and I'll stick that in there. And this I'm going to call done. Let's just have a quick flip through. So here's our cover with the chipboard and some scraps, die cut piece. Going inside, nice tuck spot, could stick pictures in there, ephemera. Again, another little tuck spot with space for writing on the back. We have our top pocket here with a tag. Don't let anyone dull your sparkle. On this side, we have the back of that tag, and then we have a little bicycle here. That's a tuck spot for another picture or ephemera or journaling card you can write on the back. And then our tuck spot here with our little homemade impromptu journaling card there. And that is it for this mini album tutorial. Now remember, I have, oh yes, some more to share. So we saw these two, whoops, let me just back out of it. These two here were made using the current kit. And then I have three more examples. Now, you might remember, okay, so let's actually just start with the more recent one. The June card kit, Party Hat and Streamers. I still have a bunch of stuff, so that's what I made this one with. And this one I didn't round the corners. This pink sparkle par card is not from the kit. Um, it was something I had in my stash, but all the die cuts are. And then I've got a little tuck spot here, and I just used some scrap paper here that you can write on and put in there. Left this blank for like a picture, but I did leave the top of the butterfly open. And again, this one is a top pocket, which I did the thumb notch on both sides. I think I must have backed this to some card. It's nice and thick. And then I added a little scrap paper there. And this is that lovely pattern paper from that kit. Then on this side, we have this hand die cut here with some pieces, three die cut pieces from the pack, a little flowers, a little tiny tag. Oh, excuse me there. You zoom in close and then you get out of frame. And then lastly, I guess I'll use this. I have put on this little banner piece and I left it open on the sides. You can stick a picture in there or any other ephemera. And then that's the back. I'm just going to zoom out a little more so I have a little more room. Then from May 2022, Koala Smiles. This this is a fun get to work with. Um, <clears throat> all those lovely Australian plant life and the cute kangaroo. Now I just used some craft cardstock as the, the the mini album background, and then I used these pieces of ephemera. This, um, let me see, I'm just gonna grab something here. I was thinking you could slip a picture in there and just kind of highlight the little part you want, like maybe a, a wallet or something, um, photo of someone. And but that's why I, I've left all the sides open so that. I glued on this part and this part. It can be used that way. And then we have our cute... Oh, the other thing I was thinking about this one was it'd be a nice mom book, you know? Um, because I don't know why. The, the kangaroos, like, just remind me of mothers. And so there's Mama Kangaroo here with a couple pieces of die-cut ephemera from the pack. Again, a top pocket. And this tag is probably from some other kit. I just... Put it in there. So I did use other pieces from other Spellbinders kits to fill this up. I had to cut this tag down. It was really large. Um, and I can't get it back in. There we go. So it's a little tricky. I'm going to let that. 
And then again, oh, there's the bottom. That's the bottom of this tag. That's funny. So I just took it and used it as a tuck spot on this side, which we have some map paper from that uh, koala kit, and then a couple more tags and a little notebook paper piece. This is some of the, the pattern paper that came in the koala kit, and I've just taken a long piece and folded it right at the bottom of the album and just glued the top so you can write more or less as you so desire. And finally, from April 2022, I gathered up some of my Picket Fences kit and I used just some white cardstock for my stash for the album and then I've layered some flowers. There might be flower... this I think is from another kit. But um, for some of my old kits, I just gather them up in ca by category, so it's hard to know which kit it came from when it's not recent. But most of them, I tried to pick out things that were from Picket Fences. Um, actually, I don't know. I might have picked from all over from this one. But So this one, I have the little phone in the house, and then I took this little um, paper clip, and there's this piece. Then the coffee cup, I've glued partially. We have a little library card. Again, a top pocket. That's funny, most of these are top pockets with a tag that I found in one of my stash. This is an interesting um, way. I, there was this kind of map paper, pattern paper here. It's kind of like map. Anyway, I took this large house die and I scored it just at about a quarter inch so that you can flip it open. And then I had to search to find the second die cut of this tiny fence, but it was a perfect uh, thing to add to make it flip. So there's two die cuts here glued together on either side of the house. And that way you kind of know this is interactive. So finally on the back here I have this is kind of like a more domestic like house list, I don't know, grocery type themed one. So there was this grid pattern paper or squared pattern paper. I just took a few scraps, there's three or four, three, did a tiny staple with my tiny attacher and this is a little scrap of paper that I've glued on two sides, these two short sides, and then the last sheet can just slip through there. So that the list is in the journal. Come on, don't make me a liar. Okay, it slipped in there, but before I slip it all the way down, I'm going to show the um, little ephemera. I guess this is not all the way down. Maybe that's so that, yeah, this can come, you can tuck it under there if you want, if you don't want to cover it up. But yeah, I was thinking grocery list, so I had found all the little food die cuts, and I liked those two for that. So. And that is it. We have five already super quick mini albums. Thank you for staying today. If you stayed till the end, you are amazing. And if you like this content, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any more. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful creative day. Bye.